Hello Indie Game Fan, September closes off very strongly with a number of potential Game of the Year contenders, where releases of interest begins with Black Witchcraft, a dark fantasy action platformer RPG where a witch is summoned to a manor and has to stop the antagonist from reviving a wicked witch. The action looks good with a focus on combos, being in the style of something like Devil May Cry with a variety of weapons including guns at your disposal. Following in the footsteps of Stray, there are a number of titles starring animals that have become more interesting such as The Spirit and the Mouse, a wonderful looking 3D platformer where you play as a rodent who is able to channel electricity, using it to help the townspeople in this sleepy little village. The humans in this game are stylized effectively and while the environments are not the most photorealistic, should be adequate for what they are trying to do. Tactics game fans, this one's for you. Lost in Fanta Land is a roguelike tactical RPG where you're exploring the world and battling enemies on a grid, mixing things up by adding in deck building elements and does have great pixel art. Of course, this is not a wholly original concept but it does look pretty good. It was interesting to note that you only control one character and not a party of them, in contrast to Into the Breach for example. which does change up the strategy required. Never Awake is a neat looking shoot em up entry that uses twin stick controls, taking place within the nightmares of a girl in coma where you have to fend off monstrous enemies. I really like the look of this, and in contrast with the horizontal or vertical shoot em ups, the twin stick design does provide more flexibility and is something different. I don't usually cover VR games on this channel, but I do have to give a special mention to Boon Lab, since this is a Nyx game from developer Stress Level Zero, who have made notable VR titles like Duck Season and Boonworks. With this game being a sandbox physics first person shooter, we are exploring a mysterious lab. If any one of you is deep into the VR scene, please let me know how you find this game. We're interested to know how far the envelope has been pushed with the technology these days. Bigger Games begins with Brewmaster Beer Brewing Simulator. Golden, sun soaked grains. The finest hops. Yeast that brings a gift of life. But the most important ingredient is passion. Bigger Games begins with Brewmaster Beer Brewing Simulator, a title that, on the surface, looks like just another first person simulator title, but it comes to us from developer Oroch Digital, which is under the Sumo Group umbrella, which in turn is fully owned by Tencent, so of course it shows up here. But the simulation does look impressive and will be of interest, especially if you're curious about brewing your own beer. Discovery. And if you're talented enough, opportunity. So, experiment. Have fun. Brewing is about the craft and the journey. But most of all, express yourself. You 
are the brewmaster. Hello, micro friends. Great news! Virgil knows you might be a little homesick, but that can be repaired. Another title that on the surface looks like an indie game is Grounded, which could pass off as another first-person survival title with the premise of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, but in fact comes to us from Obsidian Entertainment and Xbox. You know, the people that made The Outer Worlds Permanent Concussions and Fallout New Vegas releasing out of early access after two years and has been very well received. is a little rusty, but with a little maintenance, we can unravel why you are here. Before someone or something terminates your tiny existence. Good luck! The Epic Games Store exclusivity of Kenna Bridge of Spirits has expired, so it's coming to Steam, where this gorgeous third-person action-adventure title is neat, although I'm still sore that it got Indie Game of the Year at the Game Awards since it was bankrolled by Sony, but technicalities aside, should be worth a play. Hello, spirit. I seek passage to the Sacred Mountain Shrine. Our village is bound to the Shrine's energy. But that power faded long ago. tragedies of our past. You must help these spirits if you wish to reach the mountain shrine. It's okay. You have to go now. Developer Unknown Worlds Entertainment is best known for Subnautica, where the next title is Moonbreaker, a turn-based strategy title using a tabletop motif, where you're even able to customize and paint these miniatures, where a lesser-known fact is that this studio is owned by Crofton, or the PUBG people, making it not so indie.
Smaller games begin with Beautiful Mystic Survivors Prologue, the demo to yet another Vampire Survivors-like title, where indie game YouTubers are trying to figure out a better term for this, so let me know what you think of Bullet Heaven. Commanding Nations looks like an old-school real-time strategy game in the vein of Command & Conquer with three factions to play as and no population cap on your units, possibly being epic. We have some notable ports this week as well, such as the Switch version of North Romantic, a relaxing city builder that is one of the best of the year so far, making it not to be missed. Credolis is a first-person puzzle game where exploring a mysterious island, having to solve puzzles in order to gain access to a sunken lighthouse leading into Atlantis, looking pleasant as well.
We also get console releases of Let's Build a Zoo, a tycoon game from last year that I really enjoyed, where the ability to splice animals together was the best part. Monorail Stories is a slice-of-life narrative adventure game with dual protagonists, where they take the monorail between their cities in opposing directions every day, but this game will rely on the quality of writing and the gorgeous pixel art. You could put it in the lost and found box over there. I think I'll follow your advice. I hope my lucky scarf is still somewhere nearby. Oh god, I hope it's not lost. Hi there, Mark. Have you seen my scarf? I think I left it on my seat this morning. Uh, no, Sylvie. I don't think so. Have you checked the lost and found box? Ugh, oh, genius! You're right! Outcore Desktop Adventure is a meta RPG about a character that lives on your desktop, but the developer has made this completely free, so why not check this out? Send, a superfluous game, is an open-world base-building crafting title you are trying to survive in the wasteland, although I don't think you need to worry about survival meters like hunger or thirst looking like it has potential. The Fridge is Red is another horror anthology containing six short stories all sharing that PSX aesthetic and looks kind of freaky.
The Matriarch is the latest social deduction game where players have to pretend to be NPCs, trying to avoid the watchful eye of the player-controlled Matriarch character, where it has some momentum prior to release and might be the next big streaming hit. Timeline Walker Dark World is a pixel art roguelite auto battler that I love the look of, coming to us from a Chinese developer, although there is English translation, where just talked about the decline of the auto chess genre, so it's nice to see games like this. Tunic also launched on PlayStation and Switch this week, meaning that it will be available on all modern consoles, but this is a front runner for Game of the Year, so be sure to pick this up. Undetected sure looks like Metal Gear Solid, making this of interest to stealth game fans. After most of the USA became uninhabitable six years ago, SEMA Corps took control of security in the new country. They want to destroy the power station and blame it on us. Keep it non-lethal and stay in the shadows. Witches sure are popular these days, with Witchy Life Story being the latest title to star one of these, a visual novel title where you have to save the Harvest Festival with spells and rituals. Yoyami Dancer's Twilight Danmaku Dancers is a fantastic looking rhythm action title where you're dodging bullets and attacking enemies, drawing of course on the Toho project once again, which continues to fascinate me on Steam.
taking them down. Let's kick off the top 5 with Terra Invicta, a grand strategy title which is a genre that I don't usually cover, but this looks exceptionally well made and has a lot of interest. We're taking over. The people will come to our side. Long live the revolution. An alien invasion has splintered humanity into seven distinct groups, each with their own ideology on how to deal with this, whereas the leader of this faction, you have to take control of the planet and then expand across the solar system, looking deeply strategic. We found something. I'll make sure they're on our side. Prepping for launch. I just talked about the beautiful pixel art city builder Lake Site when covering EGX, where this relaxing title gives off vibes similar to the Dothromantic covered earlier, but as a side scroller, being a real treat for the eyes. Another Bullet Heaven title of interest is Brotato, one where you play as a space potato, being able to wield up to 6 weapons at once. Its prologue demo version was received very well, making it another title of interest, but I really enjoyed this developer's other games as well, so go check them out. I was very torn between these two titles for number 1 and 2 since Domekeeper is excellent, being a roguelite action strategy title that is a refreshing change from the platformers and top-down action titles. This combines the mining loop of something like Steamworld Dig, With the base defense elements of the arcade classic Missile Command, we are digging to get resources for upgrades, but then have to rush back up to manually operate your defenses. I managed to get access to an early build and really loved it, possibly being game of the year material as well. I do of course have to give the top spot to Moon Scars, a grimmed up pixel art 2D souls like title that was my most anticipated game of the month for good reason, since this looks all kinds of awesome and is totally up my alley. The high frame rate animation is a real beauty as well, with effects like screen shakes contributing to the impact of the weapons, so it looks to join the ranks of the best grim dark games.